What are meta arguments in Terraform? Let's find out. Hey everyone, today we're diving into a key topic for any Terraform user, and that is meta arguments. Now the word meta might make the arguments sound scary, but don't worry, we'll learn what they are together. Meta arguments are critical to using Terraform for managing complex infrastructure configurations. And by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of what meta arguments are, how they work, and how you can leverage them to fine tune your Terraform configurations. To start, let's clarify what meta arguments are. Simply put, meta arguments are special arguments available in resource, data source, and module blocks that control how Terraform manages the infrastructure. Now, these are not passed to the provider's API like other arguments. Instead, they affect the behavior of Terraform itself. In the same way that metadata is information about the data and not its actual contents, meta arguments are directives to Terraform on how to handle some aspect of the resource and not the actual properties of the resource itself. A few common meta arguments include count, for each, depends on, provider, and lifecycle. And these give you flexibility, control, and automation for deploying, managing, and updating resources or data sources or modules. So let's break them down one by one. Let's kick things off with one of the original meta arguments, the count meta argument. This is one of the most well-known and frequently used meta arguments in Terraform. Count allows you to create multiple instances of a resource or data source or module by simply specifying an integer value of zero or greater. For example, if you need three virtual machines, you can use count equals three in your resource block and Terraform will take care of creating three instances of that resource. On the screen is a quick example of doing that using Azure and an Azure virtual machine. This configuration with count set to three will create three virtual machines in Azure, each with a unique name, disk name, and host name. How do you get that uniqueness? Well, when you use count, Terraform assigns an index to each instance it creates, starting at zero. You can access that index value using the expression count.index, and that allows you to assign unique values to each instance. In the example, we're using count.index to give the virtual machine a unique name, and we're also using it to reference an instance of a network interface that is being created for the virtual machine. The network interface is also using the count meta argument, and you can reference a specific instance using an index reference in square brackets like you would for a list. Next up, we have the for each meta argument, which is a bit more advanced than count. While count creates multiple instances based on a number, for each creates instances based on a set or map. This allows for much more flexibility. Let's say you wanna create several virtual machines, each with different and unique configurations. You can use for each to iterate over a map of values and use those values inside of the configuration for each of those resources. In the example code that I'm showing, Terraform is creating two virtual machines, each with different VM size values determined by the value stored in map. One is using standard DS1 v2 and the other one is using standard DS2 v2. The unique names are based on a special expression called each.key. The number of objects created by the for each expression is equivalent to the number of keys in the map or items in the set. Instead of having count.index to use for each iteration of the loop, we can use the each.key expression to get the key of the map entry for that instance and each.value to get the value corresponding to that key. If you want to know more about count and for each and when you should use one versus the other, Check out my video on the topic. Now let's talk about depends on, which is all about dependencies. Terraform is 
pretty good at figuring out dependencies on its own. But there are times you need to explicitly tell Terraform that one resource depends on another. For example, let's say you have a virtual machine that relies on a virtual network being created first. You can use the depends on argument to ensure the correct order of operations. At the bottom of the resource configuration for the virtual machine, there's a depends on argument, and that takes a list of other resources that, are, that this resource is dependent on. Here, the virtual machine won't be created until the Azure RM virtual network resource is fully provisioned. Likewise, if you decided to recreate the virtual network, Terraform will recreate the virtual machine as well and do it in the correct order. The provider meta argument lets you specify which provider instance should manage a resource. This is handy when you have multiple instances of the same provider, like managing resources in different Azure subscriptions. In the example code, I have three provider blocks, two of which have an alias, one for dev1 and one for dev2, and the third has no alias, making it the default provider. If you want to know more about the provider block, check out my video on the topic. Below that, we're creating two Azure virtual machines, dev1 and dev2. By specifying the provider meta argument inside the block, the first one is using Azure RM.dev1. So you have to specify the alias of the provider instance that you want to use. The second block has provider set to Azure RM.dev2, so it will use the dev2 alias provider. If you do not specify the provider meta argument, then the resource will use the default or unaliased provider instance. Last up, we have the lifecycle meta argument, which gives you fine grained control over how Terraform creates, updates, and destroys resources. The lifecycle meta argument is actually a block that contains other arguments to control those things. Let's go over a few of them. We have create before destroy. This ensures that when a resource is updated, Terraform will create the new instance before destroying the old one. Normally, Terraform's behavior is to destroy the resource being replaced and then create the new one. This is especially useful for resources that need to maintain high availability during a replacement update. Prevent destroy, if this is set to true, will force Terraform to not allow re the resource to be destroyed under any circumstances. That includes a recreation action. This adds an additional layer of protection to prevent accidental deletion. Ignore changes tells Terraform to ignore changes to specific attributes, which is useful when those attributes might be updated outside of Terraform, and you don't want Terraform to be constantly trying to update or fix them. Here's an example of the lifecycle block in action with an Azure virtual machine. Down in the lifecycle block, we have create before destroy set to true, prevent destroy set to true, and ignore changes set to the storage image reference block. In this case, the virtual machine will always be recreated before it has been destroyed. It cannot be deleted and Terraform will ignore changes to the image reference. So even if we did want to recreate this virtual machine, we would first have to set prevent destroy to false temporarily, recreate the virtual machine, and then we can set prevent destroy back to true. So it just adds that additional layer of protection to make sure you don't accidentally delete this virtual machine. Meta arguments give you control over how Terraform interacts with your infrastructure, from managing the number of resources created, to explicitly handling dependencies, to specifying provider instances, or controlling the resource lifecycle. And this isn't even exhaust an exhaustive list of all the meta arguments that are out there. Check out the links down in the description for more information on meta arguments for different object types, like resources, data sources, and modules. I hope this gave you a clearer understanding of how to use these powerful arguments in your Terraform code. If you found this video useful, hey, uh, maybe like and subscribe. And as always, feel free to drop any questions or comments down below. 
And if you're looking for more Terraform tips, check out my previous video on data source blocks, where we take a deep dive into another important Terraform feature. Until next time, keep calm and Terraform on.